The common sight of teenage boys playing football during their lunch break in a school playground. But the school these boys attend is a school with a difference. It's Europe's first exclusively Muslim school. The small town of Ramsbottom in South Lancashire is now overlooked by Britain's first Muslim school. The Moyazan calls all the pupils to prayer here at Darul Aloom, Arabic for the House of Knowledge. This is the only place in Britain where Muslim boys can learn the normal school subjects and lead a totally Islamic way of life. Throughout Britain, Muslims are trying to set up separate schools of their own, schools which could greatly affect race relations. Darul Aloom opened in August last year. Among the first 80 boys is 15-year-old Saeed Malik. Like most of the boys here, Saeed used to go to his local state school, where, as a devout Muslim, he felt he couldn't fit in. Sometimes they used to ask me, are you glad to, to be a believer of Islam? I said to them that there's nothing in it bad. It's a very nice religion. There was no way of following Islamic way of life. Because whenever I told any, any other boy um, about Islam, and they used to make jokes, started making jokes and laugh, laughing. Said used to go to Trinity School, a comprehensive of a thousand boys in a racially mixed area of London's East End. Trinity, with its Sikh, Hindu, Muslim and Buddhist pupils, has done more than many schools to take account of the different religions of the boys attending. David Johnson is the headmaster. The way we tackle this is to teach comparative religion in the first three years, which gives the boys a chance to compare their own religion with the other religions of the world and to gain a greater understanding of the religions of their classmates and their friends. Today's religious education lesson for this third year class is on Islam. By the end of this year, the boys will also have studied Hinduism, Judaism, Sikhism and Buddhism as well as Christianity. Society and so on. Are there any Muslims in here before we go on? How many? One? Is that all? Okay, so I hope we're going to have a lot to learn from him as well. Uh, so can you tell me, from what you can see on the board, where Islam started? Mecca. In Mecca, yes. And is Mecca a town or a country? It's a country. It's a town, Mecca's a town, yes. And in what country is Mecca. Saudi Arabia. Mecca's in Saudi Arabia, very good. You can see also that I've got the word pilgrimage on the board. What's the relationship between the word pilgrimage and Mecca? Can someone tell me first of all what the word pilgrimage might mean? 
a walla in the corner. Wait, you walk around a big uh, building and you go in to make... Yes, uh, there's a building in Mecca. Although these lessons in comparative religion were introduced because of the non-Christian minorities in British schools, they're still not approved of by some Muslim parents who take a very strict religious line. Does anyone know where that mosque is? They draw pictures, you know, to tell pupils about Islam, you know, and drawing up the pictures of angels and prophets is, is, is forbidden, you know. So this is un-Islamic, this is not Islam, you see. They are just trying to take them away from Islam. Those criticisms come from Mr. Karudid Malik, Said Malik's father, who is so strict a Muslim that he wouldn't appear before our cameras, because according to some very literal interpretations of the Quran, reproducing someone's image is wrong. Mr. Malik took his son away from Trinity School, even though the school has made some practical changes to accommodate the requirements of different religions. Apparently it's absolutely beautiful. They've spent a lot of money on it. The school always provides a vegetarian dish at lunchtime. And there have been concessions on dress as well. However, these changes were not enough to remove Mr. Malik's concern that the school's lessons often contravene Islamic law. He was uh, told to go in music class, and music is against Islam, you know, and I told him that uh, you shouldn't go in music class. Another thing happened uh, after PE lessons, you know, he said that he was told by somebody to go in a shower with three other boys naked. I said, you can't do that. This is against Islam, and he's not supposed to expose himself anywhere, you know, because uh, this is against our faith. What essentially Trinity School couldn't satisfy was Mr. Malik's demand for detailed Islamic instruction by Muslims within an Islamic way of life, and it's doubtful whether any multi-ethnic school could provide that. So as soon as the Muslim school in Lancashire opened, Said Malik was sent there. I came here because I couldn't learn in the state schools, so I came here to learn um, as well as Islamic studies to, to learn the Quran. I came here to, um, there was school as well as Islamic studies, so I came here to learn subjects like history, science, mathematics, and English, and as other subjects. The school is part of an Islamic theological college set up five years ago. So the pupils live with older boys training to be religious teachers. While the pupils study the usual school subjects, the emphasis is firmly on religion. <coughs> the boys are obliged to live according to Islamic principles 24 hours a day. Five times a day, the whole school stops to pray in their mosque, two adjoining classrooms which face towards Mecca. It's not just worship. Everyday activities, like eating a meal, are also governed by Islamic laws. The boys eat with their fingers, because it's the way the Prophet Muhammad ate, and what he did provides the model for all Muslims' actions. Every morning, the boys study Islam. For three hours, the boys learn passages from the Quran 
the scriptures accepted by Muslims as the infallible word of God as revealed to Muhammad. Learning the entire Quran by heart can take between one and a half and three years. These boys don't understand what they're reading and learning, for the Quran is written in Arabic, which they learn to translate only later in their education. The school secretary is Ibrahim Saeed. Well, the purpose of Darulum is uh, to provide them facilities where they can learn Islam and they can see how the Islam is practiced. For example, uh, they don't see these things in their own state schools. Here they offer the five times prayers a day, uh, collectively, and certain other things which they normally miss uh, at their homes and at their state schools. So it's sort of opportunity to give them uh, to learn, practice Islam, and simultaneously with the school subjects and school education. Now, the sheets have been given out, and you have... Um, one group working on the sheet logical order. And it's in the afternoon that the boys study the normal school subjects of English, French and sometimes science, history and geography. Their English teacher, a part-timer recruited locally, complies with Muslim custom by wearing a long skirt and covering her head. First of all, the starting off sentence, the very first sentence, can someone tell me which is the first sentence? Yes. Once a tortoise and a hare on a race. That's good, yes. Now then, number two sentence. Hands up those who've spotted where that comes. Yes. The race began. Ah, does it say that? Teaching these boys is difficult, for they're all at very different stages. Some can hardly understand English, while a few of the more advanced pupils may take the CSE exam this summer. Started. Right, carry on then. The race started. The hare ran swiftly ahead. Ah, well, we missed a little bit out. Let's ask somebody else on the question number two, then. Can you get the correct answer for sentence two? The race started and the tortoise plodded off at his usual pace. Good, that's correct. Right, well, we'll have a look. Darul Aloom is finding it hard to get teachers in the ordinary school subjects to come into this unfamiliar environment. But in the face of the difficulties, Ibrahim Saeed is trying to make the teaching comparable academically with ordinary state schools. First of all, we are trying to establish a standard of education so that we can maintain the standard in line with the other schools. So for example, if at the age of, after the age of 16, when a boy, he doesn't want to pursue the course of Islamic theology, or if he doesn't want to stay here anymore, then he should be able to cope with any polytechnic or in any of the GCE courses. At the moment, though, the school has not reached this position. Darul Aloom is a private school and so needs only to meet some minimum standards to gain state approval. It receives no money from the state. Indeed, the Saudi Arabian government helped with the initial finance and parents pay fees of £440 a year. But nowadays, Muslims throughout Britain are pressing for Islamic schools to be financially supported by the state in the same way as our Church of England and Roman Catholic schools and some Methodist and Jewish schools. But for a religious school to be accepted into the state system, it has to achieve an approved balance between religious instruction and secular education. Sit, thank you. King David High School in Manchester is a state-supported secondary school for Jewish boys and girls. I'll take the announcements first so that they don't interrupt later on. A reminder to the following prefects that they should report about half past seven to help with the car parking for the parents' dance on Sunday. That's Fine Gold, Marks, Marcus, Goldman, Cohen... But although, like Darul Aloom, King David's school pays considerable attention to religious rights, its secular curriculum has to be as wide-ranging as any other state schools and be taught to a similar standard. Because the secular teaching meets these requirements, the state pays for it. 
while the Jewish community pays for the religious education. The state has also largely paid the initial building costs, and it continues to pay most of the maintenance, improvement and repairs. State support for the education of religious minorities is strongly welcomed by King David's head of religious education, Stephen Mintz. This country has a very proud record of fairness and freedom as far as choice of education is concerned. Uh, legislation has made it possible for every parent to choose a religious education that he so desires for his children. If the religious education in a state school isn't to the parent's liking, the parent has a right to withdraw his child. Carrying on from that, uh, one would then see it quite logical that the state would allow uh, Jewish schools to, to be maintained. If we accept that our religion is an everyday, 24 hours a day affair, and that we don't limit ourselves to the end of the week and to two hours on a Sunday morning, which we as Jews believe, then obviously every day of our lives we must absorb and learn about our culture and our heritage and our religion. Judaism guides the everyday activities at King David, just as at Daryl Alum they're guided by Islam. There are prayers before and after lunch. The food is kosher, and the boys are expected to wear a skull cap on their heads while in school. On Fridays, school ends early, in time for the beginning of the Sabbath at dusk. However, in many respects, King David is exactly like any state school. The secular subjects have to take up as many hours as in any other state school, and they're often taught by non-Jews. At the same time, there is the opportunity for a slightly different emphasis. Right, well, having the headmaster, who isn't Jewish, teaches English to this O-level class. I want to start this afternoon on the Merchant of Venice. It was lucky that this particular play was chosen as a set book by the board for the year when you'll be taking the exam, because it does contain, as part of the plot, something which might be regarded as dealing with anti-Semitism, or at least the problems faced by Jewish people on the continent in Tudor times. Anyone know what the word usury means? A money lender. Yes, indeed. In the studying The Merchant of Venice, Tudor the pupils England. will mostly England cover the grounds studied in any school. Venice. But in addition, the head out. can pick out aspects of particular concern to Jews. Passage where Shakespeare comes closest to showing how much distaste he has for people who do not realise that those of other faiths or other races are human beings just as the English people were human beings, or the Venetians in this play. And we have Shylock talking about the way... Jews in general, and he as a, a Jew, has been maltreated. Hath not a Jew eyes, hath not a Jew hands, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions, fed with the same food, hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases, healed by the same means, warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer, as a Christian is? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong But inevitably, us, it's in the religious education lessons that the children learn most about Jewish culture and history. Sharon, what does mitzvot mean? Commandments. Commandments, that's very good. Alan Lee, what does the word shehazman grandma mean? Bound, bound by time. Bound by time. So we've got all these... The school day here is slightly longer than at other state schools, to allow a greater emphasis on religious education. So what have we got? We've got a, a phrase that says, Kol mitzvot haseh shehazman grandma, all positive commandments that are bound by time. And we must add something on to that, and something very interesting. Women are exempt from this, and men must take part in it. 
While the pupils study the Old Testament, modern Hebrew, Jewish history, and the modern state of Israel, they do not study any other religion. I feel that teaching comparative religion to children uh, between the ages of 11 and 16 presents more problems uh, than any possible benefits that would come from it. I think it's far too easy to confuse children at this age. Some Jews argue, however, that such attitudes are isolationist. They say that their children should learn about other religions and cultures, and that if they're in separate schools, children often don't make friends with non-Jews. The Jewish community becomes, they say, inward-looking. Supporters of separate Jewish schools argue that the reverse is true, that Jewish schools actually help their children to mix in British society from a position of greater self-confidence. I don't feel that, that children, Jewish children, can go out into society and play a meaningful role in society unless they have a firm base and a firm grasp of their own culture. And this is the role that Jewish schools are, are playing. Jews are nowadays a well-accepted part of our society, although whether this is because of or in spite of Jewish schools is a matter of dispute. What would be the effect of similarly separate state-supported schools for Muslims? For four years, the education officer in Manchester's Community Relations Council was Michael Nicholson. Like many people concerned with education and race relations, Nicholson is firmly opposed to the state helping Muslims to establish their own separate schools. We would consider that segregating, for example, Muslim children from children of the host community, the Afro-Caribbean community, at this early age would take away that opportunity, the opportunity of feeling more at ease with people of a different race. We feel that schools have a very important part to play in preparing children to live in a multiracial, multicultural society, in teaching them to accept differences in others. Here at Trinity School, children of different cultural backgrounds do mix together to some extent. However, the pupils still tend to go around with friends of their own race and culture. But the Muslims at Trinity obviously mix much more with non-Muslims than the boys at Darul Uloom do. These boys seldom leave the school grounds, and they have very little contact with the rest of society. It's because of this that the education authorities are so firmly against separate Muslim schools. Dar Loom's founders had difficulty in getting local planning permission, even for a private school. Efforts to set up state-aided Islamic schools have so far all been totally unsuccessful. This strikes Muslims who want such schools as unfair. They, like many Jews, argue that their children will be better able to fit into British society if they have a firm foundation in their own religion. Said Malik came to Darul Uloom, according to his father, in order to become a good member of our society. Well, actually, I sent him over there to make him a good citizen, you know, and, and to serve people. I mean, to, to, to let live and let others live, you know, and be a good neighbor, things like this, you know, because a good Muslim is a, is a good person, you know, so a good human being. The boys at Darul Uloom may well become good Muslims, and this is of overwhelming importance to devout followers of Islam. But the problem for those deciding whether separate Muslim schools should have state support is how well these pupils will be able to live and mix in British society. The pupils of the many different religions at Trinity School probably have a better chance of mixing harmoniously. Like many activities in similar multi-ethnic schools, Morning assembly here is designed to accommodate several faiths. The last time we met, I read something to you from the translation of the Quran. This morning, I'm going to start by reading a few lines from uh, the hymns of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism, and from their book known as the Guru Granth Sahib, or the Adi Granth. The assembly is led by the school's deputy head, who's Jewish. Though I hunger for him, my hunger does not depart if I am filled only with the world's goods. 
Though I possess a hundred thousand worldly devices, not one avails for this task. How then can I be true? How can the barrier of untruth be demolished? Despite the claims of Muslims who want separate schooling, the authorities are likely to stick with the principle of non-segregation. For they're convinced, like the staff at this school, the children who today learn and worship together will be better able to live together in the future. So the point I want to make this morning then is it doesn't matter where you come from, what religion, you'll find the message is the same. We're all precious and we all ought to respect each other by sharing one another's experiences, one another's cultures and so on, knowing more about it, we will remove from our hearts all fear of one another, all suspicions, all hatred, all prejudice. That's the only way we will ever understand that yes, basically we are the same. We are all children of God. Mm -hmm.